bylaws. They're not perfect, but they are very, very good. I would encourage you all to read them, especially people who will be holding office this coming year. It makes it much easier to understand who does what and when it is to be done. And if you don't have a copy, I know the church office will make a copy for you. Thank you. At this time, I would like to call to order the annual meeting of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ of Binghamton, New York. And I declare that there is a quorum here. There has to be at least 12 members present, and we have much more than that, I'm happy to say. Daniel, if you would open us with prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you that you have called us to be members of your family. We especially thank you for this congregation, for their faithfulness, and we pray that you will guide us in our annual meeting, all the reports and all the decisions that we need to make. Help us to listen to each other be gracious and kind. Help us to dedicate ourselves to answer your call, to be your disciple, to make disciple, to glorify you. We commend this meeting to your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is now the time when I will be happy to receive nominations from the floor for a presiding officer for this meeting. Judy? Tom Bucker has been nominated by Judy. I saw a second, I think, here first. Um, is there any discussion? Any other nominations? Then I deem that the nominations are closed. May I see by sign of hands those all in favor of Tom Bucker as presiding officer. Those opposed? No hands. It is unanimous. Tom, you have the meeting. First, I, I think it's fantastic that we've had such a good turnout today, um, especially considering the conditions that we've got, that I think we all realize how important that this is for the life of our church. Uh, what we're going to try and do is to minimize the number of times that people come and speak on the mic. So I hope that uh, people have had an opportunity to see some of the, uh, the emails that came out in regards to the reports from the different uh, committees. Uh, rather than reading them, we're going to save that for all of us on our own time. Okay. The first thing that we need to do is to accept the minutes from January 26, 2020. I'm sure you all, thank you. I'm sure you all read them. Thank you very much. Uh, may I have a, a show of hands to who's accepted? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. Our next is the report of the nominating committee. Uh, does the nominating committee officer want to come up or do you want to just go over some of the, the highlights for next year? Do that. <laughs> the boss has spoken. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I believe you all have the copy of the proposed nominations for this year. 
There's just a couple openings. One is the membership clerk, which we will address at some point in time. The other two openings are the representatives for the Susquehanna and the conference uh, meetings. They didn't have any last year. I'm not worried about filling them this year. If they have it this year, it'll probably be done virtually, and we'll address that at the time. Otherwise, most of the offices have been filled by people who held them last year. Um, lots of people didn't have a lot, uh, a lot of meetings to attend this year. So we have an issue of the number of people we have and just moving positions around. So it was proposed that we, anybody that would be willing to do so, remain in the office for one year more. Any questions? Hearing none? You want to book things visually? I can't hear you, but if you put the mask Any questions? There's no additions to what you saw printed in the, uh, the report. Do you want to vote on the individual things? Do you want to do them all at once? Um, I think we Move to accept the nominations as pre printed. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Motion granted. I mean, did you want to do membership? Do you want me to skip around here? The membership report is on page 23. I would like to take a moment to remember these saints. Warren Rezegui, April 15, 2020. Joyce Mardarian, July 4, 2020. Ethelyn Enos Sr., August 1st. 2020, and Denton Covert Jr., November 7, 2020. And my thanks go to Carrie, who very nicely placed their pictures here. I think this is a wonderful addition to the report. Uh, this does not need to be approved. I do want to say that this is uh, after nine years. I am no longer membership clerk. I do have fresh off the printer um, directories, and if you would come up and take one, one for each family, or if you feel you need more, that's fine. I think you'll be glad to get rid of me because in the last nine years, eight out of those nine years, we lost membership while I was membership clerk. So I think it's time for somebody new. Thank you. <laughs> We'll go out of order a little bit here. Uh, the trustee report. There, it's well planted into your annual report. And the thing that I want to stress mostly is that this was not an easy year. I think we can all agree on that for many, many reasons. And we have a wonderful staff and a wonderful bunch of volunteers. And Cindy, don't go anywhere. This is for you. Applause for these people. never sit still. I don't know what we would have done without such sufficient people to work with, and it's been a pleasure. We also had to deal with the, the water breaching into our building. Finally, I can stand before you and say, I think we fixed it. <laughs> uh, it was a long uh, procedure. We did it very methodically, eliminating things along the way, and hopefully all these issues are behind us and even with the great thaw that we had in December we didn't have any water coming in so that's excellent and there's a lot of other thank yous that are mentioned in the annual report 
uh, Claire for all his work that he did downstairs. And there's a lot of things going on. And so speaking about that, people kept saying, well, we need to look at this. We need to look at that. Well, this is true. So there is a to-do list. Is there a copy of that around today? I asked Carrie to have some. What's that? Oh, OK. There are copies of the to-do list. You'll see in the, uh, the new forecaster what trustees have determined to be the most important things addressed primarily in 2021. That doesn't mean all of that's going to get done, and it doesn't mean that won't, more won't be added. Okay, But the one thing that we noticed, especially this last week, is we have a Wi-Fi issue here in the church. And if we don't get that fixed soon, a lot of these virtual meetings are not going to be able to take place. And we have to take care of that. So that's the first thing that's going to happen this week. After that, we'll be trying to do the repair work for all the water breaching that we had. Um, Cindy was very creative in some of the things she did to make it look a little bit nicer. You'll notice that the Fellowship Hall, when you go down there, is nicely spanking spran. Everything's clean. We got rid of all the mold, ran dehumidifiers for weeks on end, and it's, it's really nice. It's just waiting for us to be able to use it again. Is there any questions along those lines? And the other thing I can say was all the work that we did, we did not go over our financial plan that we set forward from last year, which was really, really good. <laughs> when those reports are ready, you can, ha if somebody wants one, you can see what's on there, but you will see in the new forecaster what is planned for 2021 to begin with. Any other questions? Thank you for all your hard work. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, also, I'd like to, to put out a special recognition for Cindy and the, the group that helped to reopen our church. Uh, I think it's amazing that we were able to get to the point that we're at now. Look at the attendance that we have, and we're all safely separated from one another, meeting all the guidelines that are currently available for keeping the church open. And that was a monumental task. It's still an ongoing thing. You see Cindy is going around. She's wiping everything clean that we're touching, which, again, thank you for everything that you're doing, Cindy. Actually, I think she needs a round of applause. Okay, this used to be the toughest part of the meeting, but having the financial plan discussed, but um, do we have someone that would like to come forward? Thank you. <laughs> we need a shield. I... Sure, would you be the interim treasurer? Uh, two years into it now, so. Um, if it's all right with you, uh, I'll go right into the search report. So we'll cut down on the, the movement. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our theories and, and, and how we get to a financial plan. And then I'm going to have Bill come up and explain some of the more detailed numbers and things like that that he has a better handle on. Um, our goal is to utilize what the church has as far as uh, endowments and income and maintain the building in the best that we can and improving it all the time. Uh, keeping our, our professional staff uh, adequately compensated and uh, uh, keep, be keeping an eye on the bottom line at all times. Uh, this year, or this past year, uh, was uh, not without its difficulties, obviously. Um, our income in, in uh, the Sunday collections were down uh, our rent was non-existent for, for the most part. Um, so we had a hill to climb. We did have uh, uh, assistance from a uh, payroll protection loan from the government, and we, we were appreciative of that. Um, it doesn't look like we'll be eligible for one this year, but things are always changing. Um, I'm going to have Bill come up and talk about the endowments and and. and some of the good news that we've had this year. Uh, you'll see some of the, the numbers on the financial plan. Bill, would you come up? Uh, pretty much what we do is we look at the past few
few years, and that's what we base our decisions on for the coming year. And we've increased some numbers because there are some repairs that need to be made, as Bernie touched on. Good morning, everybody. Well, first of all, the good news is, or one piece of good news is, the uh, good news is that we are presenting to you today a balanced budget. Now, I won't kid you and say it's not going to be challenging. We don't know what this year is going to bring, but as of right now, uh, we think that this is uh, a valid, a good sound plan for the way we will be spending the church's money in uh, 2021. I'd like to point out one thing to you, though. If you look at, uh, I believe it's page two, the uh, pastor's salary. Now, it's, it's the hope always that we're going to bring a new pastor in here sooner rather than later. And uh, we haven't been able to get our arms around what type of salary level we're going to be talking about. We just don't know. So what we've done is we've put uh, numbers in there that uh, leave the line items open, but I, I, I can't promise you that uh, what level we're going to be uh, 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 I won't say stuck with bad choice of terms, but uh, uh, it's, it's just something that uh, we're going to have to watch very carefully. We are blessed with a great staff, headed by Terry and Cindy, and they've all been watching this budget very well, and that's why we were able to underrun both the uh, expenses, and thus we didn't have to uh, draw as much income. One thing I do want to talk to you about also is uh, our investments. We did very well. The stock market was very kind to us. We withdrew a substantial amount of money from the investments, yet overall the investments grew. And that's good news for all of us. The investments are our future. And the trustees do their very best to protect the investments, to protect uh, every dollar that we have. So I would like to uh, uh, congratulate the trustees and the staff as well as everybody else who contributes to it uh, and say thank you very much for our success this year and what we're looking forward to next year. Lastly what I'd like to talk to you about is our notes. We have three notes uh, currently outstanding with this church. The payroll protection note which will be forgiven. There is no question about that so and that was in the amount of something in excess of $26,000. We have the note that was originally taken out for the roof and phases one and two of the new windows that we have in the church. New then, uh, we're quite used to them now. That note I expect to be paid off this year. We have therefore had the use of the note value which is at, uh, approximately a $75,000 to help us with uh, meeting our obligations. And we were very favored by the Norwich Bank and Trust or National Bank and Trust with a good interest rate. The second note that we have, or the last note, for the renovation will be paid off in 2028. Here again, we are having the value of the use of that money to support our activities and at the same time being able to afford to pay the note off. Uh, that kind of does it for uh, a report to you. Are there any questions uh, that you have? Claire. We share germs. <laughs> on the first page, on the income, at the bottom line uh, 55, I think it is, helpers fund income. This year, the income is shown as $1,941, which is accurate. The no. mission committee uses the helper's fund to provide 
money for different things that we donate to. This year, we only were able to send out, you will see on the second page at line 82, Helpers Fund Expense is 1325, which is the checks that were actually sent. Now, the, the mission committee doesn't have a checkbook to do our giving. We have to take a, a uh, amount of money from our investments and put it in the church account, and then Vanessa writes the checks. One check didn't get written because we didn't know exactly who to make it to. And that was for $616. It's going to help two orphanages in Haiti. But Haiti's a tough place to send money to. And so that check of $616 is still in the account. And I don't want to lose it by not having it show on this year's account, this year's expenses. That's on the second page up at the top part, which says outreach expenses. So I'd like, probably the best way would be, to, as is done with the Ahern account, to show it as income this year, and then an expense of $616 that's expected. We don't normally put a line item in the budget because we take it all out of the fund, but it's already there. Can that adjustment be made? Okay. First of all, Claire, the uh, the number that you referred to, the 1941, was the actual income. That's the income statement. That was, that was the actual it, amount of money that was received. That was that's right, and that's and correct because that we took out of the Norwich Helpers Fund account and had it deposited into the church account. Yeah. So, and then if you added the 616 to 1325, you come up with the 19. That's so, right, but so in the account. So we just have to account for that. Well, in, the, in this proposed financial plan, the money isn't there, and we still have it in the account. That's my concern. Yeah, we should. Pardon? If you, uh, in, the, in the budget, what we've said is you have, we put zero down only because we don't know what you're going to spend. I know that, but we know that $616 should be there, and if you wipe it off the budget completely, we've got no money. Can you have the money to spend that you need to spend, and all that will happen is it will be recorded here what you actually spent. I'll, this report records income and expense only. It doesn't make any judgments about it. If you want to spend that, if you have that money to spend, by all means do. Okay. We encourage you to do that. But it'll show up on 2021s. Yeah, okay. In the past, we were told everything went to zero at the end of the year. That's not the case here, then. Uh, the zeros only mean we don't know how much money uh, in the budget on the far left-hand column, which is column N, is simply expense. How much money you actually spent or how much money we believe you will spend in the coming year. Whatever you spend, you spend. And this church supports it. We're, we're more than happy to. You said you had a couple of other questions, Claire. I have one other concern. The Dickinson family was incredibly generous to this church. Around 1990, they gave us a, a gift of over $1,700,000. In the time since then, for various reasons, that's down to less than half of what they gave us. And it's two or $300,000 below the endowment fund. And I would like to make a motion that the annual transfers of the Dickinson Fund and the Endowment Fund be made in approximately the same amount as their relative value to each other. What I'm saying is that each year we're taking $90,000 from each fund, but the Dickinson Fund being $300,000 less, we're taking a lot more money from there and running that fund down in comparison to the Endowment Fund. And if you'll notice the two previous years to last year, we didn't take the last payment on the Dickinson Fund, so it was only 75,000 instead of 90. I would like to say that it is the, that we should, I'm not asking for a change in the bylaws or anything, just a motion that we try and be, take the money in proportion to its value one to the other. Claire, if you'll look at the income, again, in column N on page one, 
you'll see that the endowment fund, we're anticipating taking $98,900 out of that. And the Dickinson fund is $97,200. Now that's done in a specific percentage ratio of the values of the two funds at the end of uh, last year. You mean the Dickinson fund is almost exactly the same as the endowment? In in terms of percentages, if you add them up and each what each one what each, what part each one plays, yeah. Okay, the last time I saw it was a lot less. I apologize, but that's my concern. Be that this meeting is run way too smoothly, um, one of the things that I think that should at least be somewhat open for discussion is the uh, amount that we give to our church's wider mission. Uh, that has been a concern that's come up in council and trustees, deacons, uh, in that we have always given a certain amount to our church's wider mission we have asked for a report from the UCC and how our funds have been used. We have heard nothing. Yeah, yeah we're giving, uh, is it 13,000? 12,352 dollars per year. Uh, and I don't think it's unreasonable that we should have a report of how that money is being used by the UCC. We have asked for that information. We have heard nothing. The UCC is our, our help to in finding a new pastor. Uh, again, the search committee has been working very uh, carefully with them, and we have not gotten a lot of response from them. Not that we wish to withhold any funds, but uh, whether or not we want to discuss if we want to continue to give it that that amount, and I'd leave that open for discussion. If, if I could comment to that, Tom, um, the finance committee did talk about the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> the finance committee did bring this uh, particular issue up, and what we elected to do is leave it as is, as what we've given in the past, simply because. Uh, we want to keep as good a set of relations as we can with the people in Syracuse. They are our main support for our pastoral search right now. In the future, though, with a new pastor in place, I think that the Finance Committee and the trustees would be more than willing to discuss, I'll use the term, a more reasonable number. But at this point in time, it was the Finance Committee's uh, advice that we keep it as is so as not to engender any uh, uh, further issues with the people in Syracuse when you're asking for their help. Thanks, Tom. I, I do not like the fact that, that as a member of the search committee, we're really not getting any response from them. Um, we're not getting any response for our request for how did you spend the money this year. We're just simply, they're, they're ignoring us. It's like they don't exist anymore. And um, that bothers me a great deal because they're more than ready to ask us for not only our regular amount, but additional as well. So um, I, that's my opinion. Thank you. One thing I have noticed is that with our drop in membership, um, we've, you know, nine years ago, we were up at uh, about 158 members. We are down now to 120. Does that have any impact? on how much 120 people compared to 158 
should be paying to OCWM. I'm just throwing that out there. I too feel that with the drop in membership, we justify a little lower price. And furthermore, a little lower number will catch the attention of Syracuse. I'm not saying stop doing it, but if we drop to say 10,000 instead of 12, it would catch our attention and perhaps give a little more support. And we can always say, well, we've lost so much membership and we still don't have a pastor because they haven't given us the support we need. I think it would be a good way to catch their attention, and it might even help balance our budget. Any more discussion? I just, I think I agree with what uh, Claire Said that we might reduce our amount, but I think we need to to be cognizant of the name of the fund. It is a mission, and besides the support that they give us for, or don't give us, I guess, for Pastor Search, I think we need to be cognizant of the mission work. Although, for some reason, we're we're not getting a breakdown of that. But that is, they, they provide global mission, um, you know, national, but a lot of global mission projects. Now we don't know what they are, but I would, I would hope that we could continue to ask what they are, because, you know, that is a, a, big, uh, a big thing. I, I, I feel, you know, we, we need to go into all the world with our message. I would not disagree with my spouse. Uh, I did make an effort to contact uh, the Syracuse office and uh, the trustees know this. I think people on council and deacons know this. I'm a little frustrated I do think we need to uh, use whatever uh, vehicle to get their attention. Reducing the amount of money is, is one way, but there's also a national UCC uh, structure. And I think we need to apprise them of the fact that things in New York are not going very well. Yeah. So that's a thing I wanted to add on. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Any other further? I agree with Doug. Okay. And we need to go to the national and continue to express our frustration. Excuse me? Oh. oh, that Heidi is in favor of uh, trying to discuss our situation with in Cleveland the National UCC office in regarding our frustrations. Ruth is also in, in support of that, trying to get in touch with the UCC in Cleveland.
maybe you did not uh, understand what I was saying. I agree with Claire. I think reducing the figure by $2,000 is probably uh, close to the reduction in the actual numbers that this church serves. So if, uh, if we're going to write a reason, one reason is that we have a reduced number of parishioners. The other reason is uh, your support has been extremely modest and that's been very generous. Anybody else? So I'm actually gonna suggest uh, something a little more drastic. Uh, uh, and we've talked about this before in, in various committees. I suggest that we stop sending the check. Don't reduce the amount. Stop sending the check with a letter that says, until we have some answers about where this money is going, until we get some support. I have, well, we'll talk a little bit about that in the search committee report, but um, we haven't had much help. We get no answers from them. I get no responses when I send emails. So I think uh, letting the national, and I think this is a church council issue, they should address that to the national organization, saying we're not getting the, the, the support that we need from the state agency. Um, and just stop sending the check for now. Don't, don't reduce it. They can get it back if we see some progress. And then we can talk about reducing it a couple grand. That's fine. But we want their attention. Two grand isn't going to do it. So uh, that would that would be my suggestion, and, and it's been something we've talked about before. Just stop sending it. So that's Jim, my suggestion. Yes, Jim. I think if we vote this plan the way it is, and the membership says this is the plan we adopt, we can't just indiscriminately say we're not going to send the check. The congregation. If I, could, if I could address that, keep in mind, folks, there's a difference between, keep in mind, folks, there's a difference between plan and budget. It's, this, is, this represents a plan, and that word's chosen deliberately. And you can see in other line items where we underspent the line item. We simply underspent it. This isn't a demand that we spend every single dollar. It is a plan. That's all. So if we don't if we, for instance, withhold one quarter, there's nothing that says that we, le we, the trustees, the finance committee, is legally bound, we must spend that money. It's our plan to do it that way. And for that reason, uh, I would recommend that we leave the number the same. One other item I'd like to bring up to you, I've had occasion because of the nominating committee uh, to talk with another church. now. I hope we realize that we're one of the flagship churches of upstate New York, one of them. I had an occasion to talk to the flagship church down on Long Island in a very candid conversation, I might add. And they are having precisely the same problems with Syracuse that we are. And frankly, they give an awful lot more money than we do, an awful lot more money. They, they had a meeting with the Syracuse people. I don't know how that came out yet. I, I haven't had a chance to call them back to find out. But I don't want you to feel alone at all. And I agree that somehow we have to get their attention. We refer to them as the UCC. This is Syracuse. This is simply the Syracuse office. I can't speak for the UCC. That is the national church. I don't know. But if the council wants to, and takes it in, uh, takes it that advisement, I would recommend, certainly, let's contact the National and tell them we're really unhappy with these folks. We really are. And the conference minister, that's, I'll give you my opinion of him privately.
Do you want to make that as a motion? Okay. Claire has made a motion to reduce the OCWM contribution to ten thousand dollars for two thousand twenty-one. Do I have a second? Do I have a discussion? Yes. So, is there a discussion? Okay, I think we've had that. Okay. Um, I think we need a show of hands for this one. Bob, do you have something to say? Uh, if we reduce it to 10,000, that's good, but we still got to go at them at the uh, national level. Oh, absolutely. That's, Make that's, sure that's, we do both. That's, that's, that's a given that we will discuss with the, uh, the national UCC. But this is a motion just in regards to the amount uh, for OCWM for 2021. Who is? Oh, and Janet? Just to add to this discussion, as a minister, um, I've experienced a lack of communication and organization the many years now that I've been a part of the UCC, unfortunately. And I don't know if it's a factor of Syracuse or the church itself. I just don't know how the national church will respond. Um, being congregational, it just doesn't feel as organized as some other churches I've been a part of. And I don't think it's um, ill will. I think it's a lack of organization, to be honest with you. I want you to know I've been appointed to the Committee on, Author on Authorized Ministry and it's starting in February. And I can directly tell them your concerns and hopefully increase the communication with you. That's a hope of mine and part of the reason I said yes. So they are the committee that works with churches looking for pastors. So, you know, I, I hope to help and not be, they're not the enemy, they're you, really. But there is a lack of, a total lack of organization. So hopefully that'll get better. I'll try. Thank you very much for your help, Janet. So do we call a question on in regards to the ten thousand dollar amount for two thousand twenty one? Okay. All those in favor, I think we need a hand in favor of reducing the amount to ten thousand dollars for two thousand twenty one. Well, how about opposed? I think we still need. Abstain? Abstain. Okay. Okay, so that passes in regards to the amount for OCWM for 2021. And again, that can still be up for discussion during the course of the year. So that doesn't mean that that's absolutely in stone if things do change. So, okay. Are you have to accept the treasurer's report? Yeah. Yeah, do I have a motion to accept the treasurer and the financial plan for the financial plan for 2021? As changed, yes. May I have a show of hands, please? Okay. Opposed? <laughs> but they're abstaining again, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so that passes for this for 2021. Thank you both. Yes. We've covered already most of the basis. Okay, so the search committee has been uh, meeting as regularly as we could. Obviously, this year was, uh, as I mentioned, fraught with trouble. Um, it was difficult right off the bat when the pandemic, uh, when the lockdown happened. We did not have the infrastructure to communicate other through email and, and uh, phone calls, and it's not a great way to, to run a committee where you need to discuss and um, we weren't getting any, uh, we did get uh, a number of candidates in, in from the state. Uh, I won't speak too much on the quality of, of the candidates, but uh, we do have a couple left that we're going to interview uh, hopefully this coming month. Um, and we'll go from there. Uh, we've reached out to some other organizations, the, what's that called? That's the one, National Association of Congregational Churches. Uh, we haven't had any anything from them. Uh, we're discussing uh, broadening our 
advertisement, as it were, with some other, other uh, publications, uh, doing everything we can to find some, some qualified candidates. Uh, the ones that, that we did want to look at, unfortunately, quickly evaporated. Um, but we have a couple left, and, and we're going to go from there. But uh, uh, anybody have any questions for the search committee? And we, we too, have discussed uh, what we just talked about in, in the budget. And it is a concern of ours. Uh, I'm not getting a lot of communication, if any. I haven't had anything for a couple months from the state. So, um, anybody have any questions? Okay, Bill, you got anything to say? The, the Deacon's report is written in the annual report, and unless Tony has anything else further to say, we're okay with that. One thing I, I did want to add to possibly the Deacon's report is that uh, we do have some good news, and that Reverend Daniel has agreed to stay on for another six months. Uh, so I think he has been a blessing for all of us to have a little stability within our congregation. Uh, he's thrilled to be here. Uh, we also at some point, you know, will consider or will be having uh, some pulpit supply from our, our members here uh, periodically. Um, but Daniel has agreed to stay on. And again, he's, he would like to stay until we have found a called pastor. He's, as I said, he's mentioned this several times that he felt that he has gotten a call from God to help us to reach the next called pastor. So again, he's not here. Yeah, Are you still there, Daniel? Yeah. You come back? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I'd like to have a round of applause for Daniel. had our trustees report, search committee. Um, at this point, I'd like to have a vote to accept the remaining reports, written reports within the annual report. Hopefully you've had a chance to at least look at them. Janet has something to say? Oh, you're, you're, oh, you're moving, okay. <laughs> and a second. Thank you, Marty. May I have a uh, show of eyes for acceptance? Uh, and nays? Otherwise, you're going to have to rewrite the report. So, yeah. Uh, and then we have a, the pastor's report. If Reverend Ling, do you have anything else further you'd like to add? Do you have anything else you'd like to add to the to your report? Uh, the report is in the booklet. All I want to say is rejoice always, pray unceasingly, and give thanks in all circumstances. Thank you very much. And Daniel does have some ideas, hopefully for the current 2021 to get us all a little bit more exercise and things to get us going. So stay tuned. Right, Daniel? Um, is there any other business that we'd like to bring up? Okay, Marty. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Just one thing from the financial secretary, if you have pledged and have not gotten your envelopes yet and you ask for envelopes, they are in the library on the table. You may pick them up after the service. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Very quickly, Carrie and Cindy, would you both stand up? A round of applause and thank you for what they have done. Absolutely. <laughs> Any other business that we'd like to discuss? This is the time.
This is one of the reasons why I had joined First Congregational Church is that we were able to have discussions like we had with our church's wider mission and that we, we kept it cordial, that you know, we don't always agree on things, but you know, we at least were able to discuss it in a way that uh, made it safe for everybody. So thank you. <laughs> I know. I, I motion for Tim to be treasurer for five more years. <laughs> so, uh, then I take a uh, motion for adjournment. Okay. I, I think we all agree on that, but with just an I, thank you. And as a closing prayer, I, I'd like to do the Lord's Prayer for all of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all for staying today.